الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما ولا تكلنا إلى أنفسنا طرفة عين ما بعد We continue reading from where we left off in our previous class the author Al-Imam Al-Ajuri Rahimahullah Ta'ala He is mentioning His beneficial advice To those people of the Quran We continue reading from the chapter Bab Akhlaq Man qara' al-Quran la yuridu bihi Allah Azza wa Jal The manners of the one who, re- who read the Quran But he does not do it sincerely For the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal The author he mentioned He says Qala Muhammad ibn al-Husayn Rahimahullah The author he says Muhammad Qala Muhammad ibn al-Husayn That great scholar Al-Ajuri Rahimahullah Ta'ala Hadhihi al-akhbar Kulluha tadulu Ala ma taqadama Dhikruna lah Min anna Ahl al-Quran Yanbagi An takuna Akhlaquhum Mubayanatan Li akhlaqi Man siwahu Min man lam Ya'lam Min man lam Ya'lam Ki ilmihim He says again May Allah have mercy on him that these narrations that he has mentioned previously, they indicate what has preceded, that we have mentioned, what has, pre- what has pre- uh, preceded from what we have mentioned, that the people of the Qur'an, what is most befitting and incumbent upon them is that their manners, they will be completely different. Their etiquettes will be different and separate from the etiquettes of those people who do not know the likes of what they know. They do not have the knowledge of that they have and meaning the knowledge of the Quran and the knowledge of the Sunnah the knowledge of uh, the obligation of following the Salaf of the Ummah the knowledge of the Tawheed and the knowledge of the names of Allah Azza wa Jalla and His attributes the knowledge of the commandments and the prohibitions the knowledge of the reality of the straight path the knowledge of the truthfulness of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the promise of the Jannah and the threat of the Hellfire those people who know this and they have this knowledge it's not befitting for them to be equal in their manners and their conduct with those people who do not know. He's saying, That it is very incumbent for their manners and their etiquettes to be completely different from the manners and the etiquettes of those who do not know the likes of what they know. إِلَى اللَّهِ الْكَرِيمِ فِيهَا وَلَمْ يَلْجَأُوا فِيهَا إِلَى مَخْلُوقٍ And if a calamity befalls them, that they seek refuge and they return, seeking aid and protection and refuge with devotion to Allah Azza wa Jal alone. And they do not seek refuge or return or seek, uh, have reliance upon the creation, upon the people. وَكَانَ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ أَسْبَقَ إِلَى قُلُوبِهِمْ The first, that Allah Azza wa Jal is the first into their heart. That the first thing that comes to their heart at the time of calamity is the remembrance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal as their creator and that He is the one who has decreed all things. And that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this calamity that is befall on this individual, Allah, He is the one who has decreed it. And Allah, He is the only one who can remove it and protect him from it. So then at the time of calamity, the first thing that he remembers is Allah Azza wa Jal. And the first one that he, the first one that he uh, relies upon and puts his trust and reliance and his hope in is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not in the people. Not in the people. Na'am wa kana Allahu wa kana Allahu subhanahu asbaqa ila kulubihim. And the first thing that come to their mind, to their heart is the remembrance of Allah Azza wa Jal in the time of calamity. And this is the case of a believer. In the time of calamity, the first thing that he will say, Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un. That verily we are from Allah and we are to, and to Him we are returning. Meaning that we are servants and slaves and Allah Azza wa Jal, He has the command and the decree and the power and the authority and the mulk in His hands subhanahu wa ta'ala and He does what He wills and He commands what He wills and whatever He commands, there is no stopping that. And they remember the narration of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Ma asabaka lam yukum li yukhtiyak. وَمَا أَخْطَعَكَ لَمْ يَكُونَ لِيُسِيبَكَ That whatever befell you, it is not going to miss you. And whatever did not occur to you, it will not happen. And he, the, the decree is in the hands of Allah Azza wa Jal. So their heart is attached to the Creator and not the creation. Their heart is attached to the Khaliq and not the Makhluqeen. 
their heart is attached to Allah Azza wa Jal first and foremost, and their reliance and their trust is in their Lord, and this is from their greatest manners. And this is uh, an indication the author is mentioning here that he said that it's not befitting for those who know what they know, and they know in the likes of what they know, the knowledge that they have, that they have the same manners and, and the same etiquettes. And then he mentioned this great conduct right here, this great khuluq and azim that with their iman and their strong knowledge and their faith in Allah Azza wa Jal, that their tawheed is strong, and that in time of calamity, their their place of refuge is Allah Azza wa Jal. They seek refuge in the remembrance of Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. The first thing that they find comfort in in time of calamity or in time of need or in time of distress is their Lord Subhanahu wa Taala. The creation doesn't come to their mind at this time. The people doesn't come don't don't come to their mind at this time. Nam that it's Allah Azza wa Jal. Because of the strong iman and faith in their heart, that knowledge is deep in their heart and it has sunk in. They're the people of the Quran. They recite the, Lord, the, the words of their Lord nighttime and day, in the daytime, pondering over its meanings, striving to understand its, its, its words and commandments, and striving against their soul to apply that and to live by that. So, in this manner, Allah Azza has honored them with His remembrance in their heart. Allah Azza has honored them with this knowledge. So, the one who Allah honors with the knowledge of the book. He honors them with the knowledge of the Sunnah. This is an honor from Allah Azza wa Jal. Ikram, huh? takreem, azim from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala. That Allah honored this person that He taught him His book. That Allah Azza wa Jal honored this person that He may that He taught him the meaning of La Ilaha Illallah, taught him the conditions of La Ilaha Illallah, what it necessitates La Ilaha Illallah, the conditions of Muhammad Rasulullah. Many people they don't have that honor. Allah Azza wa Jal, He did not bless every one from His creation with this great honor and this great nobility. Rather, He has given to whom He wills from His creation, subhanahu wa ta'ala, as a grace from Him. So the one who has been given the blessing of guidance and the one who has been honored with uh, the knowledge of Allah Azza wa Jal and His tawheed and the one who has been honored with the knowledge of the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the one who has been honored with understanding and striving against his soul to follow the way of the as-salaf as-salih, those pious predecessors. It's not befitting for him to act like those people that don't have that honor. It's not befitting for him to act like the people that don't, they, they don't have the knowledge that he has, that they don't know what, they, what he knows. It's not befitting for them to be the same in their conduct, in their speech, in their dealings, in their transactions, with their family, with their friends, with their co-workers, with the people in the street, when they do business and their transactions. It's not befitting for them to act like the fools, to act like the ignorant, to act like those people that do, that do not have this blessing and this honor. Rather, Allah honored them with this knowledge and this is a miza that they have. And they, because of this, they should be the best of mankind. They should be the best of the people. They should be the best of the people in their, in their conduct and in their dealings. From that great conduct is that they rely entirely on Allah Azza wa Jal. They rely entirely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, قَدْ تَأَدَّبُوا بِأَدَبِ الْقُرْآنِ وَالسُنَّةِ They have disciplined themselves. They have become disciplined and educated. They have become nurtured and cultivated upon the Qur'an and upon the sunnah. Upon the Qur'an and upon the sunnah. So because of this, he says, فَهُمْ أَعْلَامٌ يُقْتَدَى بِفِعَارِهِمْ so because of this, they themselves have been disciplined by the Qur'an and the Sunnah. Allah has honored them with this knowledge and they have uh, striven against their souls, strove against their souls. They were striving against their souls to apply that. Now they have become leaders. They have become leaders that are, are, are means of guidance. Those who are followed. Their actions are followed and, and imitated. لِأَنَّهُمْ خَاصَةُ اللَّهِ وَأَهْلُهُ Because they are those special uh, creatures, they are those special, the special servants of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the people of Allah Azza wa Jalla. Hizbullah, and these they are the party of Allah. Allah inna Hizbullahi humul mufrihun. The author he mentions verily the party of Allah. They are the ones that are successful. They are the ones that are successful. And this is the case that whenever a believer he strives to learn the the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla, he strives to learn the proper creed and the proper belief. He strives to learn the proper application in manhaj. He strives to learn those commandments of Allah Azza wa Jalla and those prohibitions that are found in the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla and in the sunnah of the Prophet. And then he strives to apply that. He becomes like a, a, a star, a light, a lamp for the people. 
and he mean, a means of guidance. He becomes a means of guidance, and others are guided by way of him, by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. By the permission of Allah Azza wa Jal. And this is because he himself, he has disciplined himself, and he has learned the way, uh, the upright methodology and the upright creed. He has learned the way of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And because of this, he has become a qudwa, hasana, a qudwa hasana. And this is from the, and a role model, a good role model. And this is from the supplication of those righteous servants that Allah Azza wa Jal, he mentioned about Ibad rahman those slaves, those noble and pious and righteous slaves of Ar-Rahman that Allah Azza wa Jal, has praised in his book from their traits is that they ask for this. They supplicate for this. وَهَبْلَنَا مِنْ Huh? رَبَّنَا هَبْلَنَا مِنْ أَزْوَاجِنَا وَذُرِّيَّاتِنَا قُرَّةَ عَيْنٌ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا زَاكَ اللَّهُ خَيْرًا نَعَمْ وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا Oh Allah, and make us for the righteous, imama, a leader. Make us leaders for the righteous. This is a, a noble verse. نَعَمْ Oh, will our Lord make our wives and our children the delight of our eye. And this is a supplication for Allah to make them obedient to him and his messenger. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because whenever a believer, he sees his wife and his family, his children, obedient to Allah, they become the delight of his eye. Whenever they see his fa- whenever one sees his family obeying Allah, and complying to his commandments, reading his book or following his sunnah, mentioning the name of Allah in the morning and the evening and before they eat and drink and the likes like this. Or whenever the child sneezes, it says, Alhamdulillah, like this, Alhamdulillah, this is from the, something that would delight the father's eye. He will, he will find happiness and joy in this, in the fact that his child is following the sunnah, Alhamdulillah. Or in the fact that his wife is following the sunnah, Alhamdulillah. Likewise, the woman, she will likewise find that same delight in her eye, finding that her husband follows the sunnah. Following the way of the Prophet ﷺ, studying, striving to learn and apply those commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal, hoping to be from those righteous servants. Rabbana hablana min azwajina wa dhurriyatina qurrata ayun wa ja'alna lintaqina imama and make us, and make us, and our families, naam, make us leaders for the righteous. How can a person be a leader for the righteous? There's a, there's a beautiful understanding in this supplication. Oh Allah, make us leaders for the muttaqin. For the muttaqin, those people who believe in Allah Azza wa Jal and they comply, they comply to His commandments, hoping for His reward, and they fear His punishment, leaving off His prohibitions, fearing His punishment. It's a supplication to be, to, to be a leader for these people. How can one be a leader for these people? Huh. How does one become a leader for the righteous? Aywa, ahsent, ahsent. That means first, before a person can be a leader for the righteous, he must be a follower of the righteous who have preceded him. He must be a follower of the righteous who have preceded him. So in this application, make us a leader for the mutaqeen. Meaning before that, make us from those who follow the mutaqeen before us. Thus we will become a, muta- a leader for the mutaqeen after us. So before one can be a leader, he has to first be a follower. Before the one can be a student, a teacher, he has to first be a student. And before he can be a leader for the righteous, he has to first follow those righteous who have preceded. And if he follows those righteous who have preceded, then he will be a leader for the righteous who come after him. Then he will be a leader for the righteous who, who come after him. Now, I mean, this is what uh, Mujahid he mentioned uh, with regards to this verse. وَجَعَلْنَا لِلْمُتَّقِينَ إِمَامًا قَالَ الْمُجَاهِدْ رَحِيمُ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى جَعَلْنَا مُتَّمِينَ بِالْمُتَّقِينَ مُقْتَدِينَ بِهِمْ That's the meaning of the verse. He said, he said, make us a leader for the righteous. He said, mean, meaning make us from those who follow the righteous. Make us from those who follow the righteous and take the righteous as an example. And because the one who takes the, the righteous as an example, then he will be an example for the righteous after him. Then he will be an example for the righteous after him. So this is the case. The believer, whenever he complies to the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal, and he strives, Allah Azza wa Jal will raise his rank. And then he will be a, a role model in goodness, and a role model in khayr, in his home, and in the street, amongst his companions, and the likes like this. Wherever he goes, he will be a light for the people. Because he will have those good manners and the good etiquettes. And he will have the good creed and the good belief. And this will show in his actions and in his speech. 
And then as the author, he mentioned, he says, فَهُمْ أَعْلَامٌ يُقْتَدَ بِفِعَارِهِمْ أَيْ أَهْلُ الْقُرْآنِ The people of the Qur'an, sincerely. Those who, what are they doing? يَتْلُونَهُ حَقَّ تِلَاوَتِهِ They are reciting it a true recitation. Reciting it in order to understand it. Striving to ponder over the meaning so they can follow it and, and, and apply it. These people, they become leaders. They become leaders. Naam? Because they are the people of Allah Azza wa and His specific special servants. The author, he mentioned another chain of narration, this time with his chain, uh, with a, a chain to Al Fudayl ibn Iyad. Rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, Yambagi li hamil al Quran, Allah takuna, lahu hajjatun ila ahadin min al khalq, ila al khalifati famanduna, wa yambagi an takuna hawaiju al khalqi ilayhi. Al Fudayl, that great Zahid, and that one, that scholar of hadith, Al Fudayl ibn Iyad, he died in 187. He was very pious and righteous man. At one time in his life, he was misguided and corrupted. It's been mentioned about in his biography, but then he, he, he was guided later in his life, and he became upright and pious and righteous, and, he, and a scholar of hadith. Uh, he mentioned here, here, he says that it's incumbent for the carrier of the Qur'an that he has no need from anyone. He has no need for anyone in the creation. He doesn't have a need for them. He doesn't rely on them. He doesn't need them. His need is with Allah Azza wa Jal. He has a need. His needs are, he finds his need in, in Allah Azza wa Jal. Allah is the one who he needs. He doesn't need the creation. He said, not from the leader or anyone under than him. He said, but rather what is most befitting and incumbent for that person of the Quran is that all of the, of the needs of the people, they come to him. And the people should be in need of him. He should not be in need of the people. Rather, the people should be in need of him. The, the leader should be in need of him. The layman should be in need of him. Those under uh, the leader and, er, and from the leader on down, they should be in need of him. He means by that, Rahim Allah Ta'ala, as the ulama have mentioned, meaning that they should be in need of him and his knowledge and his sincere advice and his direction because he is a person, Hamilu Qur'an. He is the one who is carrying the book of Allah Azza wa Jal. He is the one who knows what is permissible and what is impermissible. He is the one who knows the proper belief and the proper creed. And Allah Azza wa Jal and His angels, in His books and in His messengers, and in the day of judgment and the decree. He is the one who knows what is halal and what is haram. It might not be clear for some people, but it's clear for Him because He's a person of the Qur'an. He's from the people of knowledge. So then what he, he shouldn't have need for the people, whether they have a need for Him. They have a need for Him to remind them. They have a need for him to remind them if they become heedless or to teach them if they do not know or to advise them if they need advice because he's the person of the Qur'an. He's the person of the Sunnah. He's the one who is carrying the, the book of Allah Azza wa Jalla and the legislation, the legislation in his heart. He shouldn't have a need for the people. He shouldn't have a need for the people whether the people they need him uh, to direct them, to direct them and clarify for them what is permissible in their speech and in their actions, in their conduct, what is permissible for them in their transactions and their, in their dealings. And the likes like this, the people should be in need of the person of the Qur'an. The person of the Qur'an should not be in need of the people. Should not be in need of the people. Naam? This is the, this is the case. This is the case. So the author, he says, likewise, وَقَالَ وَالسَّمِعْتُ الْفُضَيْلِ And in one, another narration with the chain to Fudayl, he says, حَامِلُ Quran, حَامِلُ رَايَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ لَا يَنْبَغِ لَهُ أَنْ يَغْلُوَ أَنْ يَلْغُوَ مَعَ مَنْ يَلْغُوَ وَلَا يَسْهُوَ مَعَ مَنْ he said, uh, Al Fudayr, he said that the carrier of the Quran, he is carrying the banner of Islam. He's carrying the banner of Islam. This is something a believer he, he must realize that he is uh, carrying the banner of Islam. Many of these people in this land, the only thing they know about Muslims is what they know from what they hear in the radio or what they see on the TV or in the news and what they find from their dealings with us. Whenever they meet us at work or when they meet us in school or they meet us in the street or where they're neighbors and the likes like this. So the impression that they know about Islam is what we show them. What we show them. If we show them the, the correct dealings and the correct manners and the correct uh, creed and the correct belief, the correct methodology. If we show them that we obey, abide by those commandments and we don't pass them and transgress them. Not for our neighbors and not for our co-workers and not for our colleagues and not for... Uh, our business partners or anything like that, we, or rather we follow limits, then they respect that. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He will put that respect in their heart for the believer. He will, he will make the, the disbelievers have respect for Him because He follows His commandments. Because He follows His commandments. I know a brother, he used to pray. 
He used to work construction. He used to work construction with uh, very rough people. And, but he would, every day he would go pray. The, his co-workers would laugh at him. In the beginning, they laughed at him. And, and they, would, they, would, you know, they were curious about him. But after some time, they seen that he did that every day, that, he is, that this is how he is. Even they would try to trick him and they would try to deceive him. Because they would say every time, for example, they say, look over here. And there would be a woman over there. He looked, and he would look and he would turn away. Like this. And then they'll say, look over here. And he'll look over there. Like another time, it'll be a man and he won't look away. He's like, what are you? He's like, how come every time we tell you to look at a woman, you turn away? Are you, are you, are you like that? Like they're trying to you know, mock him like this. But then eventually they found out that this is his dean. That this is how this man does. He doesn't speak like they speak. He doesn't do what they do. And in the end, Allah Azza wa Jal, he, he honored this person. It's a true story. I know the person. And they would remind him it's time for prayer. It came to the extent they would tell him, it's time for you to go pray. It's time. Isn't it time for you to go pray? They remind him whenever the Lord comes. He's working with his companions. These people that at that, at that time, they used to, yani, they would mock him. And the likes like this, eventually they respected him. And they would tell him, it's time for your, your prayer break. Go in prayer. We, we, we got it covered. Like this. Allahu Akbar. This is for the one who holds on to his deen. This is for the one who holds on to the commandments of Allah. Azzawajal. Many people, they're ready to comply and give up their deen. Just to have the pleasure of a disbeliever. In his business contract. Or even, even just to have his friendship. Ready to throw the commandments of Allah Azzawajal behind his back. Ready to, to, to throw the sunnah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam behind his back just for some uh, to fit in. To what he believes is that he will fit in. But rather the hearts of the people are in the hands of Allah. The hearts of the people, they're in the hands of Allah. Hamil Quran, Hamil Rayat al Islam. The one who is carrying the Quran, he is carrying the banner of Islam. He's carrying the banner of Islam, especially in these lands where, where a believer he is representing Islam. Many of these people, they have no clue about Islam except for what they see from us. What they see from you at work. What they see from you uh, in school, in your, in your transactions, in your dealings. If you show them the correct view of Islam, if you show them that, that, that uh, I believe in Allah Azza wa Jal, and this is why I'm kind to you, and this is why I don't do what I do, or this is why I said what I said, and this is why I act like I am, because of my deen, because of my belief in Allah Azza wa Jal, they will respect that. Maybe they'll accept Islam from the dealings. Many of the people... Right? Accepted Islam in the early generations because of the, 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 the transactions and the dealings with the people. They, they weren't, what do they say, flip, flip-flop. They don't, if, you know, like this, you know, going back and forth, you know, com- com- compromising their deen. Rather, they stood fast on their deen. And Allah Azza wa Jal honored them. And this is the way to have honor and respect, to stand firm upon the commandments of Allah Azza wa Jal. That doesn't mean that a one who has to be rude, but rather he will tell him, for example, if a woman, maybe at his work or at his job, a woman, maybe she's a boss sometimes in this, in this country, and she'll try to, for example, shake his hand. Uh, if he's weak in faith, he may be just sell out for that moment, shaking that woman's hand, feeling that he may be rejected, or that he may not get the position. But the Prophet ﷺ, even whenever he took the bay'ah of Islam, whenever the people were taking the bay'ah and, and making an allegiance to him for Islam, he would shake the men's hands, and then the woman, he would tell them, I don't shake women's hands. And he would take the bay'ah without shaking their hand. The Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. This is his way. That he wouldn't touch the the woman that is not permissible like this. That one that the, the woman that is a stranger for him. And this is the way of a believer. Likewise, he would not touch the woman. He won't take it lightly like that. That he would just shake a woman's hand. Rather, he, how would he do it? He would tell her in a, in a manner. If he had to deal with her, for example, in the, in this country, for example, he had a situation and it was like that. He would tell her that in my religion we don't shake women's hand. Like that. Very easy. In my religion, excuse me, we don't shake. If she put her hand out like this, you say, I, I, I apologize. In, my, in our religion, we don't shake. It's not permissible for us to shake the hand of a woman. And you will find that they will respect that. Bidnillahi ta'ala. But a, a believer, he won't. He won't. And he compromises his deen. Hamil al-Quran, he says, Hamil al-Rayat al-Islam. The one who is carrying the Quran, he's carrying the banner of Islam. Because the Quran is Islam. Al-Islam is, is the Quran. It's in the Quran. The book of Allah Azza wa Jal. So the one who is carrying the Qur'an, the one who is bearing this, this weight, the, the words of Allah Azza wa Jal, properly and truly, then he will comply to those commandments and he will uh, be a representative of that book. Huh? The people will see the light in him 
and he will be a, a guide for others. He said, لا ينبغي له أن يلغو مع من يلغو ولا يسهو مع من يسهو ولا يل يلهو مع من يلهو and he, he will not be it's not befitting for him to 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 waste his time with those who waste his time and to be heedless and to be negligent and to speak vainly and falsehood and the likes like this when the people are just having vain and foul speech or speaking about things that are not permissible or things that are permissible but it's wasting time it's not befitting for this person to waste his time with the people who waste time or to speak about uh, things that have no benefit along with those people just wasting their time and speaking about falsehood or speaking about uh, issues that are of no importance or things that do not benefit him or things do not, that do not concern him, being heedless of the hereafter, being heedless that his speech is being recorded. It's not befitting for him to be like this. The author, he mentioned again also, Al-Fudayr, he says, إِنَّمَا نَزَلَ الْقُرْآنَ لِيُعْمَلَ بِهِ إِنَّمَا نَزَلَ الْقُرْآنَ لِيُعْمَلَ بِهِ فَاتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ فَاتَّخَذَ النَّاسُ كِرَعَتُهُ عَمَلًا He said, Al-Fudayr, he mentioned another narration from Fudayr ibn Iyad, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he says that the Qur'an was only revealed so that it can be applied. The Qur'an was only revealed so that it can be applied. إِنَّمَا نَزَلَ الْقُرْآنَ لِيُعْمَلَ بِهِ The Qur'an, the only reason it was revealed, and for the purpose of application, so that it can be followed. So that it can be followed. But the people, what did they do? He says, فَاتَّخَذَ النَّاسِ قِرَأَتَهُ عَمَلًا But the people, they have considered that the recitation of the Qur'an is, is the application. And he's sufficing with the, with the, with the, with the recitation only. That they, they think that they're applying the Quran simply by reciting it with their, with, their, with, their, with their mouth, with their voices, with their lips, reciting it, but not following it in the application. Not following it in the application. He says, This is in the time of Fudayr. He died in 187. The Quran was only revealed so that it, can be, that it can be applied. But many people, they have unfortunately taken the, the, the recitation only as in considering it an application. Naam. The author he mentioned that Imam Al-Ajuri rahimahullah ta'ala The meaning here What does it mean that the Quran was only revealed for it to be applied? He says أَيْ لِيُحِلُّ حَلَالُهُ وَيُحَرِّمُ حَرَامُهُ وَيَقِفُ عِنْدَ عِنْدَ مُتَشَابِهِهِ The meaning that the Quran was revealed So that it can be applied Meaning that the people will declare what the Quran, Halal, what the Quran has made halal and what is made permissible in the Qur'an, the people will find that and believe that to be, huh, be halal. Whatever, the, whatever has been declared to be halal and permissible in the Qur'an, then the people will find that to be permissible and they will believe that and they will partake in that, believing that it's halal for them. And likewise, whatever is, is made impermissible, haram, in the Qur'an, likewise, they will declare that and believe that, that this is impermissible and they will leave that off. And they will leave that off. And likewise, the, in the issues that are unclear, they will also stop and leave those issues off also. This is what it means. And to apply the Qur'an. To apply the Qur'an. What is made permissible, then they partake in that. And they believe that it's permissible. And whatever is made impermissible in the book of Allah Azza wa Jal, then they believe that it's impermissible and they leave that off. And whatever is from the affairs that may be unclear for them, then they likewise will leave that off as well. They will leave that off as well for fear of falling into that which is that which is impermissible. The author he mentioned uh, another narration with his chain. He says uh, mentioning here from the salaf some of the salaf. كتب حذيفة المر عشي إلى يوسف بن أسباط حذيفة المر عشي one of the one of the the salaf he wrote a letter to Yusuf ibn Asbalt. He says in this letter and to his, one of his companions, he said, He said, it, re, it, has reached, it has reached me that you sold your deen for two small items. I need two, two, I need two items. It has reached me. Now, this is, a, this is a man, he's writing his companions with this concern. This is what he heard about him. بَلَغَنِ أَنَّكَ بِعْتَ دِينَكَ بِحَبَّتَيْنِ Any two items. You sold your deen for two items. Any two small items, something. Or maybe some wealth, some, any a small portion of the dunya. You have sold your deen for this. How, would that, how did that happen? He said, وَقَفْتَ عَلَى صَاحِبَ لَبَن وَقَفْتَ عَلَى صَاحِبِ لَبَنٍ فَقُلْتَ بِكَمْ هَذَا فَقَالَ هُوَ لَكَ بِسُلُسْ فَقُلْتَ لَا بِثُمٍ فَقَالَ هُوَ لَكَ وَكَانَ يَعْرِفُكَ 
وَكَانَ يَعْرِفُكَ Now these are from the ulama of hadith. These are from the people of knowledge. One is writing the other one. He's concerned about him. He said, It's reached me that you sold your deen for a small portion of the dunya. حَبَّتَيْن And he's something very small. It has reached me that you sold your deen for this. How was that? He said, You, you, uh, you went to the, the, the one who sells leban, the one who sells uh, milk. And you asked him, How much is the milk? And he said, it's, it's for a sixth. And this is the price, the sixth. And he said, no, 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 no. How about for a, an eighth? And he said, okay, you can have it for an eighth. Uh, for example, like this, somebody would say, in, in, in our dollars today, you ask him, how much is this? He would say, oh, this is a hundred dollars. He said, how about 80? Okay, it's 80. For example, the phone. You want to buy the phone from somebody? So how much is that phone? It's a hundred dollars. How about eighty dollars? It's okay, you can have it for eighty. Like this. He's considering that he sold his deen in this manner. Why? He said, Wakana Yarifuka. This person he knows who he was. And he meaning he knows that he's a person of knowledge and he knows he's a person of Quran and he knows that he's a person of deen. He knows that he's an Imam. He knows that he has a rank and status in the deen. And the only reason that he gave him a cheaper price. Is because of his knowledge of his status in the deen. Because of his knowledge of his status in the, in the deen. So whenever this person, he, and he, ma'kasahu, it's called ma'kasah, like that, he tried to get him to come down like this. And in reality, what caused him to agree with him to come down is he knows his status in his rank. Well, that's the shaykh. Oh, that's the shaykh so and so. That's imam so and so. Or that's the brother who memorized the Quran. Or that's the brother who teaches like this. He, because of his rank and his status in the deen, he was able to get a cheaper deal. He was able to get a cheaper deal. Now, so this occurred here, and maybe this person here didn't realize that. But he heard this, and this is how he is reprimanding him. He considered this to be as if he bought his deen. If he, excuse me, if he sold his deen. What does he say? He said, فَقَالَهُ وَلَكَ He said, okay, you can have it. And he, for that cheaper price, he said, كان يعرفك. And he, يَعْرِفُ مَنْزِلَتَكَ وَمَعَ دِيَانَتَكَ He knows that you're, you're a status and your rank. He knows that you're a person of religion and deen. A, per, a, a religious individual. He said, فَقَالَ اِكْشِفْ عَنْ رَأْسِكَ قِنَاعِ الْغَافِلِينَ And he's like, raise the, the veil of heedlessness from your head. And don't be heedless like these people. The, the only reason he's giving you this cheaper price is because your status in the deen. Don't be like those people who use their deen to get an advantage in the dunya. And even if he was heedless about this, he's telling him to wake up. Wake up. You have to be cautious whenever you deal with the people like this because this is what they will think about you. And this is what's really, the reality is he gave you a better deal, not because he is going to give you a better deal, but because of your status in the religion. Because of your status in the religion. So he's telling him he, he, need, he needs to wake up and not be heedless. وَانْتَبِهْ مِنْ رَقْدَةِ الْمَوْتَى وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ مَنْ قَارَ الْقُرْآنَ ثُمَّ آثَرَ الدُّنْيَا لَمْ آمَنْ أَنْ يَكُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ مِنَ الْمُسْتَهْزِئِينَ He said you have to know that, uh, he said you must wake up from, uh, from the life of the dead and you don't be asleep, don't be heedless. Don't be heedless about the, the reality of these affairs. Don't be from those and know that the one who reads the Quran or he learns the Quran and then he preferred the dunya, he is not safe to, to, to be considered from those who mock the, the, the words of Allah. He's not, he, he's not safe uh, to be considered from those who mock the, word, the, the, the verses of Allah. And this is a, a very heavy statement. A very heavy statement that he would use the. The, the book of Allah Azza wa Jal to gain status in the deen, uh, in the dunya. That he would use the knowledge of the revelation to, to gain a portion from the dunya. Now he is saying here that the person who does this, then most likely he will be considered from those who mock the verses of Allah Azza wa Jal. Mocking the verses of Allah. Taking the verses of, of Allah Azza wa Jal as joke and jest and mockery. And he using these verses of Allah Azza wa Jal in order to gain some, din, uh, some position in the dunya. To gain some status or some rake, to gain some wealth or some or, or some money, or, or the likes like this, or here even to just to get a cheaper price on an item in the market, he is telling him, and this is the way the salaf is salih. They used to be cautious like this with regards to the deen. They used to be aware of these affairs, and they were cautious that they would ever uh, be considered uh, or fall close to using the deen of Allah Azza wa Jal as a means for them to gain the dunya. As a means for them to gain, to gain the dunya. 
The author, he mentioned another narr- narration with his chain. He says, وَكَانَ مَيْمُولِ بِمِحْرَانِ يَقُولُ لَوْ صَلَحَ أَهْلُ قُرْآنِ صَلَحَ النَّاسِ He mentioned that if the people of Qur'an were to be upright, then the, then the people, all of the people will be upright. And this is a, a beautiful understanding. Because if the people of Qur'an, and the people of knowledge, the students of knowledge, if they were sincere in their, in their search, in their quest for knowledge, if they are sincere in seeking knowledge, learning the Qur'an sincerely for the sake of Allah Azza wa Jal, being truthful with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fi talib al-ilm, wa fi tadris al-nas, then they will be a great benefit. They will first themselves be rectified and they will be a means for rectification of the people. But if the people who ascribe to knowledge, they themselves are wicked, they themselves are corrupt, they themselves uh, are, are foul in their conduct and in their manners and their dealings and their speech and, and, the, and, the, and the people are not safe from their tongue or their hand. And these are the people who ascribe to knowledge. Then the people are going to take them as a role model and an example and they will be corrupt like them. But if the people of knowledge themselves are corrupt, if the students themselves are corrupt, striving to be sincere, striving to purify their intention, striving to comply to the commandments of Allah, then they will be that good role model. And the people will follow them. And the people will be rectified likewise. So this is the case. If the people of Quran, they were to be upright, then the people likewise would be upright. Then the people likewise would be, be upright. But whenever they see that the, the people of Quran, they are, are heedless, or they are negligent, or they have foul speech, or foul conduct, or foul manners, or, or they partake in that which is impermissible in the dunya, and the likes like this, in their wealth, or in their property, or with their family, or the likes like this, then the people will follow them in that. As he mentioned before previously, he, they will say, and they will say for him, you know, so and so he studied this long, he does this. And I, I'm more. I never studied. I'm just a regular layman, so I have more right to do that. You know, so and so he 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 has a uh, he's a great scholar, or he's a student of knowledge, or he has praise from so and so and so and so. He doesn't come for fajr. Then I mean, I'm more likely. I, I shouldn't have to come for fajr either. If that's the case, he's way better than me. I don't have the praise of the ulama. I don't have a, a doctor's degree. I don't have uh, uh, memorized the whole Quran like this. But the one who memorized the whole Quran, he should be the first one to come to comply to those commandments. He should be the first one. And if not, then he will be a role model in su. Al Qud was sayya. The people will say, well, you know, he's uh, memorized the whole Quran or he memorized uh, Bulugu Maram or he is a student of knowledge. He doesn't come. And then, and alhamdulillah, I mean. I'm not like that, so even I have more right. This is what the shubha that the, the, the layman will get. The shubha that the layman will get, the author, he mentioned this more than one time so far. So if the people of knowledge, the people of Qur'an, the people of the sunnah, na'am, the, the people, the students of knowledge, if they're upright, sincerely, then the people will be upright. That's why it's been mentioned, and this is something that is known, that whenever there is knowledge, and a person of knowledge in a community, and a person of knowledge and a knowledge and an application, you will find that, or the or people, even the more the, the more knowledge there is in a community, and the more people there applying that knowledge, the less evil will be in that community. And if you go to another community where there's no knowledge there, you will find that the evil there is great. You will find that the evil there is great. Go to another community. Even some of those communities, they claim that it's a Salafi community or Salafi masjid. If you go there, there's no knowledge there. You will find that there's a lot of evil in that community. A lot of vices, a lot of sin, a lot of fitna in that community. Well, because there's no knowledge there. There's no knowledge there. Naam, or the people of knowledge there, or even, even worse than that, if there is a community and then there is knowledge there, but the people are not applying the knowledge. And this is even worse time for them. How could that be? A community, there's, there's several students, and then the people are still corrupt, all of them. And the fitna is still great, it's not becoming lighter. This is a musiba. This is a musiba. Because the case is that whenever the knowledge comes and the proper application comes, then the society becomes rectified. Because those people, they'll be a role model. Those people, they'll be a role model, and they'll be followed in khayr, they'll be followed in goodness. But whenever one he says it, but he doesn't follow it himself, then he is, the ulama, what do they say about this person? He says it with his tongue, but he doesn't follow it with his actions. And he, his tongue calls to the jannah, and his deeds call to the hellfire. 
His tongue calls to the Jannah, his tongue calls to the Khair, but his actions call to, to Shar. To Shar. Now, this, is, uh, this is contrary to what is correct. This is contrary to what is correct. Rather, this is from those signs of an nifaq al amali. Now, the hypocrisy in the actions. Hypocrisy in the actions. So, a believer, he will strive against his soul, especially a person of the Quran, especially a person of the Sunnah, especially a student of knowledge, somebody who's striving to learn. He will strive. And uh, no individual is safe from sin, but he will strive against his soul and he will make that effort. And this, uh, and this will show in the barakah, will come in his speech and come in his actions. In this manner, communities become upright and the evil, it goes away. And the shar, it goes away. The innovation, it goes away. The, the hatred amongst the ranks, it goes away. The animosity, it goes away. And because the knowledge comes, the light of the knowledge of the Quran and the Sunnah, the light of the way of the salaf al-salih, this, and he removes the darkness of falsehood. It removes the darkness of ignorance. It removes the, the darkness of sins. Whenever it is uh, obtained and applied, when it is obtained and applied properly, sincerely. This is the case. Naam, so he says here, Maymur ibn Mihran, Quran, Salah nas Salah nas If the people of the Quran had been uh, upright, then the people will be upright. Then the people will be upright. The author, he mentioned another narration with his chain, this time to one of the companions of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, to Abi Sa'id al-Qudri. Radhi Allah anhu. He says, Samitu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yaqul, yakunu khalafun ba'd al-sinin adha'u salata wa attaba'u al-shahawat fasawfa yalqawna ghayya thumma yakunu khalafun yaqra'un al-Qur'an la ya'adu taraqiyahum. وَيَقْرَأُ قُرْآنَ ثَلَاثَةٌ مُؤْمِنٌ وَمُنَافِقٌ وَفَاجِرٌ فَقَالَ بَشِيرٌ فَقُلْتُ لِلْوَلِيدِ مَا هَؤُلَاءِ الثَّلَاثَةَ فَقَالَ مُنَافِقٌ كَافِرٌ بِهِ وَالْفَاجِرُ يَتَأَكَّلُهُ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مُؤْمِنٌ بِهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُ مُؤْمِنٌ بِهِ He mentioned the narration here. He says that uh, Abu Sa'id al-Khudri, al Khudri, رضي الله عنه, he says that I heard the Messenger of Allah صلى الله عليه وسلم saying that there will come after some time a people who will neglect the salat and they will follow their desires. People who neglect the salat. And this is, can be in more than one way. Adha'u salat. Yani adha'uhu tamaman. Some people they neglect the salat entirely and they left it. They did not pray it entirely. They left salat. Na'udhu billah. Others they neglected salat by neglecting its prerequisites and by neglecting its conditions and its pillars. By neglecting the the uh, the ruh and the soul of the salat, for example, of having khushur, they neglect the salat. Maybe their body moves, but their heart does not move. In the salat, they have they they are, are are neglecting the rights and the conditions and the pillars of salat, not performing it properly, not performing it properly, not inwardly and not outwardly. Now, this is what has been mentioned. There will become a people a time people do this. Other other people they neglect the salat by delaying it from its proper time. By delaying it from its proper time. So even if a person, he prayed it in its proper time, he still has to pray it in the proper manner, according to the way the Prophet ﷺ, or, is, or is he's, he's, considered, uh, he's considered from those who have neglected the salat. Now the Prophet ﷺ, he said, Sallu kama ra'itumuni usalli. Pray in the manner as you have seen me pray. As you have seen me pray. So then a believer, he has to ask, how did the Prophet ﷺ pray? Who saw him pray? Ah. Huh. The companions. So then if we want to know how he prayed, and we want to pray how they saw him pray, we have to look at the life of the companions. How did they pray? And how did they transmit from, from him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, how he prayed? Now I'm a very uh, clear evidence for the obligation of following those companions, because they're the ones who transmitted this command, and they're the ones who mentioned how to perform and to comply to it. And if anyone tried to pray as the Prophet prayed, and did not follow the way of the companions, then they would be lying. They would be following desires. The only way to pray as the Prophet prayed is to pray in the manner, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that he was seen praying. And those who saw him praying were his companions. Were his companions. So in order to follow him, you have to follow them. You have to follow them. You have to follow them. This is very clear, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Naam, so somebody who tried to says that he is following the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we say, which companion narrated that? Because if, if you didn't get it from a companion, who did you get it from? Because they're the ones who told us that he said that you have to pray like that. Rather, they're the ones who told us he used to pray. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. 
So then it's an, um, a, another clear uh, obligation to understand the deen properly and the understanding of those great companions. The understanding of those, those great companions. Naam, so neglecting the salat is in more than one way. Even if a person, he prayed, and on time, precisely, outwardly, the manner of the Prophet ﷺ, but the whole time he's thinking about what he's going to do after salat. Huh? The whole time he's thinking about what he's going to do after Salat. Or the whole time he's thinking about what he did before Salat. Or the whole time he's thinking about something other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Or what he's doing. The people are saying Allah Akbar. He even says Allah Akbar, but there's something greater in his heart at that time. Because he's not thinking about Allah Azza wa Jal. His tongue is saying Allah Akbar, but his mind is thinking about the dunya. This one he has also neglected the Salat. A believer he has to strive to, to fight his soul, to be... Uh, uh, Awake in Salat, to be aware of what he is saying in Salat, to, to remember that he is in, in Salat, and that his heart is not uh, turning away from Allah Azza wa Jal. There's a great benefit Ibn Qayyim, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, he mentioned about the hadith of the Prophet, Al-Ikhtilas. Al-Ikhtilas, fi Salat. Al-Ikhtilas is whenever somebody takes something when somebody's not looking. Ikhtilasahu, he, he stole it. And he, whenever a person's not looking, like this, uh, it was the, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was asked about uh, about iltifat, iltifat fi salat, looking around like this. Iltifat is like this, looking around, moving the head left and to the right, looking looking around. Now, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was asked about doing that in salat. Look, like in salat, for example, he's looking around like this, looking around, not looking where he's supposed to look, and at his place of sujood. So the Prophet ﷺ said, this is ikhtilas. Ikhtilas un ikhtilasahu shaytanu min salat al-abd. That this is, yani the, the shaytan, he has stolen a portion of the, the servant's salat. And he has stolen a portion of his reward. Stolen a portion of his reward. Like this is the case with the eyes. This is the case with the eyes. Looking around like this. Shaytan, he is stealing a portion of the reward of the, the, that person's salat. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentioned a, a, a beautiful benefit about this. That, that if that's the case with the eyes, what about the iltifat of the qalb? The iltifat of the qalb. The heart also has iltifat. And he's looking to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. Looking away. And not being focused. And the heart looks away. This is definitely, shaitan is taking something from his salat. And this is the, the, the ruh of salat, the dhikr of Allah Azza wa Jal. That the salat is waqim uh, salat ali dhikri. Allah Azza wa Jal He mentions and establish the salat for my remembrance. Waqim salat ali dhikri and and establish the salat for my remembrance. Now this is this is one of the greatest purposes of salat to remember Allah Azza wa Jal. So whenever the heart, even maybe the person not, now his eyes are not making iltifat, but his heart has made iltifat. His heart is turned away from Allah Azza wa Jal. His heart is looking to other than Allah Azza wa Jal. His heart is thinking about other than Allah Azza in a time whenever it must be for the sake of Allah Azza And his heart must be conscious. Because it's, now he's in ibadah, worship. And worship is not accepted from the heedless. From the heedless. So the heart, if it turns away from Allah Azza then this is uh, losing, he's neglecting his salat. He's neglecting his salat. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, likewise, he mentioned about this. He mentioned this in this book, Al Wabal Al Sayyib, Min Al Karim Al Tayyib. He mentioned likewise in making the example of a person in this life. If he was addressing a king, for, some, for example. If somebody was talking to a king or to a leader or somebody with authority or somebody who, ha, who has honor and respect and, the, and he is talking to him, the king or this leader is speaking to him and addressing him with something very, very important, some very important business or issue he's trying to tell him. And he's looking around like this. While he's standing there talking to him, he's looking around like this. What would you think about him? Huh? Nah, very rude. This is very rude. At minimum, he would be this person. He, he's he's rude, or this is a person is a fool. He can't even focus for a moment while I try to tell him, I give him some uh, beneficial information that will benefit him, like this, huh? Or even if a person is standing there, sometimes this even we maybe have an experience dealing with some people. Sometimes you talk to them, and they're looking at you, but they're not there. This one, he's not looking around like this, and that's clearly rude. But sometimes a person, maybe he, 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 we, we talk to him, but they have something on their mind. So they, 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 what you hear them, that doesn't, that doesn't, doesn't recollect in their mind. Now, so what would that person also say? Oh, this person is disrespecting me. 
He's not even paying. I'm, saying, I'm telling him, trying to give him some beneficial information, give him some direction, or mention some some very uh, powerful benefits, or whatever the case may be, and he's not even paying attention to me. This is the example, and walillah al-mathal al of the one who stands in salat, huh? and and his heart is not remembering Allah Azza wa Jal. This is what has been mentioned. Even Allah, this is from a verse, muktabis uh, min ayah. It's coming from a verse in Surah Maryam. فَخَلَفَ مِنْ بَعْدِهِمْ خَلْفُ مِنْ أَضَعُوا الصَّلَاةِ وَتَبِعُوا الشَّهَوَانِ فَسَوْفَ يَلْقَوْنَ غَيَّةِ Now that there will come after them. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He mentioned the prophets, many of them. He mentioned them, one after the other. Now many of the prophets and the, and the, uh, and the messengers. Subhanahu wa ta'ala and Surah Maryam. And then after that, He mentioned this verse. And then after them will come a people, a generation. And they will neglect Salat. Neglecting Salat happens in these ways. Again, neglecting salat, some people, they neglect it entirely. They don't pray. Other people, they, don't, they pray, but they neglect it by, ne- by neglecting its time, delaying it from its proper time. Other people, they neglect it by fulfilling the, the pillars and by fulfilling the, the, the conditions and by fulfilling the proper requirements and praying in accordance to the sunnah. Others, they neglect it by what? Having the heart being heedless during the salat. Having the heart being heedless during the salat. All, this, all of this is considered neglecting the salat. So a believer, he will, try, he will strive to not be from those who neglect the salat. He will strive. This requires effort. It re- requires effort. It requires effort. A believer, he will strive. He will ask Allah Azza wa Jalla that he will not be from the heedless. A'udhu billahi min al You seek refuge from, being, from, from, from heedlessness, from being heedless, from, from being forgetful, from being from those who have knowledge and it does not benefit them. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi used to seek refuge with Allah from knowledge that's not beneficial. And if from that knowledge that's not beneficial, it's knowledge that's not applied. Some knowledge in itself is not beneficial, it's harmful. Other knowledge itself is beneficial, but if it's not applied, then it's not beneficial for him. It's harmful. So the Prophet says, A'udhu Billahi min ilma na yinfa. He will seek refuge from this. He will seek refuge from this. Now, uh, the narration he says, and then they, after that, they, so what do they do? They neglect the salat. Whatever they neglect the salat, what do they do? What tabu? Shahwat and they follow desires. They follow desires, giving preference to what the uh, the the command of the of the soul, the commandment and the lusts of the of the soul over the commandments huh, of the creator of the soul, of the creator of the soul. Naam? and because of this, they have once they start giving uh, preference to their desires, at this time the rights of Allah Azza become neglected. The rights of, of, of Allah Azza wa Jal become neglected. And his indication likewise from this, from the first step, how is this occurring? Neglecting the salat. How important is it for a believer to strive to establish his salat properly? In salat tanha an al wal munkar. That verily a salat, it prohibits indecency and it, rep- it prohibits foulness. And the ulama, they mention if a person is praying, he's a person of salat, he, he prays his five daily prayers, but he's still. Huh? He has fuhsh in his speech or in his manners or in his conduct. Huh? And he's, he's doing munkarat and, and with his wealth and with his money. Then his salat, is something wrong with his salat. Because the reality of the salat is that it prohibits tanha and al fahsha'i wal munkar. The salat, it prohibits this. If a person he establishes the, pra- the salat properly, iqamat huh? salat. If he established the salat properly, Properly in his life, then that salat will be a means for him by the permission of Allah Azza wa Jalla to prohibit him from indecency in his tongue and his speech, from indecency and foulness in his actions, and also from uh, sins and the likes like this. Whenever the, the salat is established properly, Naam, so there's going to come a people. What are they going to do? Neglect the salat. And after that, what do they do? They follow their desires. So they, ne- they neglected the salat. <clears throat> and follow their desires, and because of this, they will they will meet a severe punishment, a severe punishment. And then he mentioned that the narration it says, after this, there will come another people who recite the Quran. It will no, it will not go past their their throats, any the collarbone, not go past their throats, and many it will not sink into their heart. And verily, three type of people will recite the Quran: the believer, and the hypocrite, and the wicked. Naam, and it was mentioned, uh, who are these three? He said, the the munafiq, the hypocrite, is the disbeliever. In the, the book And the wicked one He is the one who uses the, the Quran As a means of provision and he, he, To gain status and rank in this dunya And likewise the, the believer He is the one who believes in it He is the one who believes in it The author he mentioned in another narration This time to Al-Hassan 
He says uh, that Al Hassan he mentioned Rahim Allah Ta'ala Murar to Anna Wimran Ibn Hussein Ala Rajul and Yakra U Surah Yusuf Alayhi Salam Fakama Imran Yastami Uli Kira Atihi Falemma Ferara Sa'ala Festarja Imran Sa'ala Festarja Imran Wakari An Talek Faini Semitu Rasulullah he said Allah who Alayhi Salam Yakul Menkar Al Quran Menkara Al Qurana Felias Alilah Azawajel Bihi he mentioned here Hassan, he said, I was walking with Imran ibn Hussein, the great companion of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hassan al-Basri, rahimahullah, he said, I was walking with Imran ibn Hussein, radiallahu anhu, and we passed by a man, this man is, and they're in the street, he's reciting Surah Yusuf. After that, Imran, he stopped to listen to the recitation. They go past the man, the man is reciting Surah Yusuf. Imran, the companion, radiallahu anhu, he stopped, they stopped to listen to the recitation. After this, whenever the man is finished, he asked for some wealth. He asked for some wealth. And he for his recitation. So what did Imran do? فَاسْتَرْجَعَ مَا مَنَ اسْتَرْجَعَ Ah. قَالَ إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ When do you say this? When does a believer say that? When does a believer say, "Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun"? Musiba calamity, great, great, great calamity. This is the understanding of that great companion. This man, he's reciting Surah Yusuf. They stop to listen to him and his recitation, listening to the Quran being recited. Whenever he's done, he asks for wealth. He asks for money. He asks for money for for the recitation like this. And what did how, what is the understanding of this companion? Inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi rajiun. He said, In bina, let's get out of here. Let's leave. Let's leave. He said, Verily, I heard the Prophet وسلم, saying that if you recite the Quran, then ask Allah by way of the Quran. And it has that you ask Allah, Allah, I'm reciting your book for you. Provide for me, answer my supplication, guide me. Like this. But you don't ask the people, you don't use the Quran to ask the people. You don't use one one does not use the Quran to ask the people. This is a calamity. This is calamity that a person he will use a rank in the deen uh, uh, to gain the dunya, to gain the dunya. This is the understanding of the companion. He said, Verily, I heard also him saying, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there will come a people, they recite the Quran, and they will ask the people by way of the Quran. They will ask the people by way of, of the Quran. He mentioned another narration similar, uh, the author to Al Hassan. He said, Kuntu Amshi Ma Imran ibn Hussein, Ahaduna Akhidun Biyadi Sahibihi. فمررنا بسائل يقرأ القرآن فاحتبس عمران يستمع القرآن فلما فرغ سأله فقال عمران انطلق بنا فإني سمعت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم يقول اقرأ القرآن وصل الله عز وجل به فإن بعدكم قوم يقرأون القرآن يسألون الناس به He mentioned another narration similar similar to the same meaning previously that they went past the person he's writing reciting the Quran after that he asked for some wealth for his recitation for his recitation. Imran, he said, let's leave. Verily, the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, recite the Quran and ask Allah for, your, and for, for the reward for your recitation. Then ask Allah for the reward for your recitation. In this manner, likewise, the author, he mentioned another narration, this time to Anas ibn Malik, he says that the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, yuta bi hamalati al-Quran yawm al-Qiyamah fayakul Allahu azza wa jal antu mu'atu kalami akhidhukum bima akhidhu bihi al-anbiya al-anbiya illa al-wahya and this narration is a, is a weak narration. Uh, we will skip this narration. The author, he mentioned, he says, وَقَالَ مُحَمَدْ إِبْنَ الْحُسَيْنِ فِي هَذَا بَلَاغٌ لِمَنْ تَدَبَّرَهُ فَاتَّقَ اللَّهَ وَأَجَلَّ الْقُرْآنَ وَصَّانَهُ وَبَاءَ مَا يَفْنَى بِمَا يَبْقَى وَاللَّهُ عَزَّ وَجَلَّ الْمُوَفِّقُ لِذَلِكِ He said here, closing the chapter, uh, the author, Muhammad ibn Hussein al-Ajuri, rahimahullah ta'ala, he said, and what I have mentioned so far, this is sufficient. This is sufficient. And for the one who ponders, for the one who ponders and fears Allah Azza wa Jal, and he honored and respected the Qur'an, and he protected the Qur'an, and he wasanahu, and he protected the Qur'an from being a means to gain the lowly dunya. Protecting the Qur'an, meaning holding it high in honor and, and reverence and rank, and, and applying it as a means to draw near to Allah Azza wa Jal, not as a means to, to obtain the dunya. He said, and this person here is uh, sufficient for him, for the one who will sell this life and purchase by way of this life, the life that never ends, the life that never ends. And he, th- these people here that he's been describing in this chapter so far, and really what they're doing, they're selling the hereafter. Huh? They're purchasing by way of the hereafter this life. 
But what is the, the way of the intelligent individual is that he will purchase the hereafter with this life. With this life. He will leave this life and use this life as a means for him to obtain, for him to obtain the, the hereafter. Not use the hereafter as a means to obtain the dunya. And he says, Wallahu Azza wa Jalla al li dhalik. And Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is the one who, who gives success uh, to do this. Allah Azza wa Jalla, He is the one who gives success to, to do this. The author, he mentioned uh, after this chapter, Babun Akhlaqu al Mukri' Ida Jalasa Yukri'u li Wajhillah Azza wa Jalla. Mada yambagi lahu an yatakhallaqa bihi. The manners of the teacher. The manner, this is the chapter entitled The Manners of the Teacher if he sits to teach for the sake of Allah alone. What are those manners that are befitting for him to, to abide by during his teaching? Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika shadu la ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.